today I went researching into my old vinyls. I thought it would be cool to just discover together with you and remember what those records meant at the time for me and how it took me into this incredible musical journey. <laughs> I was 14 when I started to mix and basically there was no other option at the time. If you wanted to DJ, it was vinyl and that's it. I was playing funk, I was playing disco. Oh my God, Jimmy Bo this is the original. I played this record a million billion time. I still remember the bass line. That bass line, we could sample it today. We could make a house record with this, easy. So this is the kind of music that was played. <laughs> Crazy. When I started, being a good DJ was also having a very big musical culture. I started in the 80s and I would play this kind of music, but I also learned dance music from the 70s, because I would play also disco from the 60s and from the 50s. After that, it was uh, funk, hip hop, house, EDM, techno, all of this. It's funny because this is an unorganized DJ. So the cover is Express 2 Smoke Machine, but inside is uh, Master at Work. You're gonna recognize the acapella, it's very, very famous. <laughs> yeah, you hear it? It's like because I, I played it so many times and probably scratched it. Yeah, at the time I would use three turntables, one for acapellas and two for playing the records. And actually I started to do this even before house music. I was doing this with a uh, funk. Yes, baby, I like it. Oh, that's the full acapella. Yeah. Oh, so you're the man who come to sweep the yard. So masters at work, they've been extremely important in my life. At the time, I was playing a club called Queen. I just wanted to watch them play and learn. I had to satisfy, so you better do it right. What you waiting for? Put your back in it. <laughs> oh my God. Crazy. So I would have two of those and go from one to the other. It's time. <laughs> This is still in the time of funk, but some would be old school and play with drums, and some had vision and were starting to use synths, you know, uh, and drum machines, 808. At the time, this was the beginning of hip hop. One of the biggest and first uh, records uh, in hip hop was Africa Bambata, and this is at the same time with this. I'm gonna try to find it. Yeah. Crazy. That was the instrumental, that's what I was playing. This was insanely modern. Like, this is early 80s. It's unbelievable. No one really creates from nothing. We just recycle music. We all sampling from someone that influenced us when we were kids. That's how I feel. This record probably represents the foundation of my music culture. This is how I discovered what mixing was, what remixing was. The guy that was mixing those records, his name was Francois K, Francois K. Borquion. And this is how I started to ask myself, how do they do those transitions? So this is before house music existed. This is before hip hop existed, by the way. They would re-edit the records and they would like, as you can see, the, the drum part is extremely long. It's like, probably the, the vocals, they come in at two minutes. This is completely crazy. It would be always like a super long breakdown like this. You can make 10, 10 house music records out of this album. So this is coming out of disco really and doing this transition between disco, funk, 
and what was going to be later house music. All right, that's crazy. I can't believe I found this. This is not my handwriting. <laughs> it means I stole this record. I probably played in a club and left with, with that record. Because at the time, DJs would play the records that belonged to the club. I was different because I was always coming with my own record collection. But sometimes I would leave the club with more records <laughs> than when I arrived. <laughs> When I was 17, I got my first job as a DJ and I was working in a gay club. So disco was a huge part of gay culture. I was really into funk, but they told me, listen, you, you really need to play a lot of disco here, which I did. And this was my favorite record. Already like a synth bass. Who's gonna bring back the saxophone in music? I wanna know. That was in the 80s, and then I've asked myself, okay, what is happening in gay clubs in America? In black gay clubs in America, they were playing house. And this is how, in 88, I started one of the first house music nights in France, where actually two DJs were playing house and techno. There was Laurent Garnier, and there was me in this gay club every Monday. The first time I heard house music, it was Father Jack Master Frank, Love Can Turn Around in 87. Here you go. Okay. Wow. I found it. Oh my God, this other one. Wow, that's crazy. House Nation. Oh wow! Oh crazy! Oh my God, I forgot this record. This was the first time that I was like, oh, I can play a record that is only a drum machine and a bass line and a small sample and doesn't have to be an entire song. I just found this right now. It's funny. Because um, Skrillex just released his new single with J Balvin. I found the original record that he sampled. This was remixed by David Morales. David Morales and Frankie Knuckles were some of the people that started house music. David was playing in New York and Frankie Knuckles was playing in Chicago, of course, at the warehouse. I would book them uh, to play in my clubs early 90s and I would try to learn from them because, you know, they were basically the creators of house music. I would ask them, what sense do you use? Because there was no internet, so you couldn't go on a tutorial on YouTube at that time. Like I showed you, uh, there was disco and then there was funk and then there was house. Woo! That's what I call Deep House, by the way. Everyone heard a million times this acapella, and this is where it's coming from, on the B side of this the same record. In the there was Jack, and Jack had a groove. And from this groove came the grooves of all grooves. And while one day viciously throwing down on his box, Jack boldly declared, let there be house. And house music was born. One of the people that created house music was Frankie Knuckles. It's actually called house music, not because it's made in your house, but because it was the music played at the warehouse. The synth arpeggio at the beginning, like, it's still one of my favorite pieces of house music uh, in history. There was this label, Strictly Rhythm, it's a big, big part of uh, where I'm coming from. I played hundreds of records from uh, this label. Kanye West sampled this. But this is Louis Vega again from Masters at Work. Oh my God! I didn't even know. Sound engineer, Eric Murillo. Whoa, I can't believe this. And I'm happy to speak about Eric Murillo because he's been 
such an influential person in the DJ world, like from me to uh, Swedish House Mafia, I don't think we would DJ the way we DJ without him. Like he's been really, he was like a teacher a little bit for us. So this record on Strictly Rhythm again, that was a really big deal because this record crossed over big time in the UK into pop, even though it was a proper house record music. So that's Ultra Nate. The first time I heard something that was different and that was not really soulful, it was um, this record in 89, completely uh, life-changing for me, uh, Lil Louis. So this is absolutely nuts. It's the first time I heard this concept of hypnotic music. 10 minutes with the same repeating bass line and just adding layers slowly, different elements. So this was a completely new approach. It was like living funk, living disco, and creating something new with drum machines and bass lines. For the first time in my life, I heard a tempo change in the middle of a record. So imagine at the time, people never heard anything like this in their lives. The whole club would be screaming like crazy. And people looked at me like I was an alien because I was playing this music. This record is from 89. You can still play this record today in any house party and I know it would work. I'm the results of Frankie Knuckles, David Morales and Masters at Work mixed with Danny Tenaglia and, and Merck. They made me go into the dark side. So Danny was the master when it comes to percussions. Another record that I found very influential. So you see that they're not trying to be soulful anymore. They're not, they kind of forgot about disco and funk. And they do their own thing now, you know, they're just like using those machines and making dog music that has a soul still. So I'm French, I can't not speak about this. Daft Punk, of course, uh, Genesis. Uh, it's uh, Guiman and Thomas uh, Bengalter. It's kind of a crazy story that I'm gonna tell you. I was uh, working in a club called Le Palace in Paris. I was not only the DJ, but I was also artistic director. And uh, Daft Punk would play uh, in the smaller part of the club. In the smaller room was a little more experimental and Daft Punk was playing, Cassius was playing, Dimitri from Paris. Pedro Winter was the promoter of this night. This is how he became their managers. He couldn't work for me anymore, so he told me, listen, I have a friend, he can replace me. And this guy was DJ Falcon. He would come every week with tons of loops. He played those loops to Thomas and they created this band together on Roulet. And by the way, I have to say, the very first time I saw someone perform with Ableton Live, Ableton Live 1, was DJ Falcon. So they had a completely different approach, compression to the max, not trying to be clean, trying to be dirty. Like, French Church was like a revolution in into the dance music world. I realized that my relationship with each of them doesn't compare to what I can feel for an MP3 on my laptop. This is a physical record. This has a story. It's something that represents a part of my life. As a DJ, I don't necessarily regret because I had a lot of back pains carrying all those huge boxes. Most of the time we would play in parties that Sometimes it's windy and the, it would just jump, but there's something special about vinyls. It's like if you say, if you compare a virtual show with a show with real people, there's the human factor uh, that is there.